All right, so we are going to cover a Bosch mag that came off of a R985 Pratt & Whitney engine. Um, and we're going to go through in this video how to actually set the timing internally. I'm going to do a separate video on how to set it on the engine itself. There's two different things that you have to do to get this mag to work on, on the engine. So the first thing I want to do is we're going to cover this connector up here, which is the P lead. Um, this is the lead that actually shuts the mag off when you turn your mags off. Um, I'm only mentioning it to just to explain how this works, but um, you'll notice a, t a metal tab here that currently is grounded out to the, the box itself, to the mag itself. Um, so until you put the P lead down in here um, and push this metal tab down, you can see that it, it basically pushes down. There's an insulator here that, that keeps it from grounding out on the mag. Um, but you push it down and that, that keeps that thing from grounding. If you were to remove the P-lead, it grounds out and kills the mag. Even if you have the P-lead in, if you were to have a short or you have a bad switch in the cockpit, any one of those things that grounds this piece of metal, it ends up killing the mag, not killing it as a, long, a lifelong thing, but killing it as it won't work while that's happening. So you need to make sure you have the P-lead in is step one. The next step is the E-gap. Um, so a little bit of an explanation of an E-gap. So imagine, and this really is what how this works, but we have two magnets that sit here like this. We have a, a gear inside of here that actually has a, a magnet on it that runs in here that actually builds up an electric charge as it's passing around all of these magnets. So the E-gap is the spot pretty close in between each magnet where that gear, when it runs around, is going to generate the highest electrical charge. So we, when we time the mag, we want to make sure that we're timing it to that E-gap and not to one of the locations where the magnet sits. So the first thing that we have to do is looking inside of the window, and it's probably a little hard to see um, in the video, but there's a little dot that, that shows up inside of the, the mag, and I'll try to shine a light here and see if, if it helps any. But if you look hard, you can see a little white dot. That dot may be a dot like we're seeing here, or it may just be a, a mark that's in between the teeth to let you know where the number one mag is, or where the number one point is sitting. Um, and so if you're, if the mag is still on the airplane, then you can actually find this by finding the number one position, the number one compression stroke on the engine. And that's going to automatically line you up, you know, as long as the mag was put on right, which it should have been. Um, but that'll automatically, uh, line you up with the number one cylinder. However, like I mentioned with these magnets, the, the, gear back there is going to want to lock to one of the magnets in there. So when you turn it, it actually has a spot here that it just stops. So it feels like that's where you want to actually time the mag. And that is actually not where you want to time it. We want to time it where it's in between the magnets. And so the way that they did this when they built the mag, they have a collar on here that goes over the cam and this collar has two flat spots on it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to line this ruler up with those flat spots. And you can see there is a, a little hash mark here at the top and another one here at the bottom. And so what we want to do is we want to line our ruler up with those hash marks and the, and the tabs that are on this thing. So the best way to do this is to actually hold the ruler on here and then either turn the propeller if it's still on the airplane or in this case, I'm turning the, the gear on the back and I'll show this in a minute. So right now we have E-gap. We are perfectly in the middle of our magnets. Our wheel is on the number one cylinder in here and it's backed up just a little bit off of where it wants to stick. So if I were to let go of this, if you, if you watch this, if I were to let go of this, the, the wheel moved. And the reason is because it's, it, it's trying to, it's getting attracted to 
the the magnets in there so i have to hold this at my e-gap and so we're going to get this back on here we're going to turn it around until we get e-gap now what we want to have happen at e-gap this is our points what we want to have happen at e-gap is we want this point to start opening so if i turn this any more past e-gap you should see a separation of the point right here and you do because currently i have the the thing set properly but we're going to mess it up here in a second and show you how to fix it but so right now at e-gap as soon as i'm hitting e-gap my points are opening or they start to open so that is the timing that that's how we're going to set the timing on the mag is we want the point to start opening at the same position that we hit e-gap now if i had my timing light in here you it was it'd be easier to see this but you just have to take my word for it we're looking for that split but as soon as that split happens the timing light would go off i'll show the timing light in the next video when we actually start working on the engine but right now the only thing i'm interested in is that we get over here to, the, to this position and the points begin to open now that sets the timing however there's one more piece to this that we have to make sure that we take care of and that is that we need 10 8 to 10 thousandths clearance in this point when we get to the maximum uh opening now the maximum opening is if you look inside of the wheel in, inside of this little uh, collar here there's a little uh, stamp in there it's a little round stamp and so what we want to do is we want to line that stamp up with this arm that is what's actually pushing our points open now what that point represents is the highest point on the cam lobe so when we get to that point lined up with this arm I should have the maximum opening that I'm going to get off of these off of these points. And at that particular point, I want to take a 10,000 an 8 to 10,000 uh feeler gauge here and we're going to attempt to stick it in the points. So we're and and those fit and again because I had already um done this earlier. So my points here have a gap of about nine thousandths uh, i would guess between nine and ten thousandths and that that is okay we'll have to be between eight and ten thousandths the question is is what happens if i set my points to open an e-gap but when i get to my maximum opening i do not have ten thousandths eight to ten thousandths i'm either too tight or I'm way too open, I'm, I'm too far, too wide open. The, the answer to that is that at that point, we've got to make an additional adjustment. So not only is it critical that the point starts to open at the point that we actually uh, start moving this, but it's also critical that we get our tolerance when we get open. So what I'm gonna do, and this is how you actually adjust the points, I'm going to open this, lock screw so we're going to loosen that screw and then we've got a concentric screw here that when i move it it turns the the arm in and out on on the uh point here so we're going to turn that and now there's the, the other part that we're fixing to get into is there's three screws one here here and here that we want to loosen up and we want to make sure that we are getting the the plate in the right position and i'm going to explain that in a second so let's just for the heck of it and I'll, I'll go ahead and mention this if you turn this plate in a counter uh a counter clockwise position so we're going to move it this way and now we're going to take a look at what happens when we set the mag and so we're going to turn this back around here to e-gap so we're going to get on e-gap at e-gap we want to have this just starting to open so i'm going to turn this around until it's just just tap it a little bit make sure that we've got everything like we want it so we're just there now you have to be careful when you tighten this screw sometimes it'll actually move the arm and throw off what you're trying to do so i'm only going to 
tighten it just a little bit. So now I'm at E gap and if I move any more past E gap, you should see the points start to open. We'll go the wrong way. So you'll notice that what's happening now, let me get back on our number one here. Let me do this again just to make sure that I've got. All right, so you'll notice what's happening now, and we'll do this one more time just to make sure that we have everything going the way we want it, but we want the points to just be about to open, which they are. And now I'm gonna to continue to turn in the direction of rotation, but you'll notice that the, the points are barely opening. They are opening and they're opening at our E-gap, but the problem is they're so tight that they're not opening. You can barely even tell that they're moving at all. So by rotating this plate counterclockwise, what we're doing is we're closing the, the high end of the gap. We're closing it. We're making it more narrow. In, in comparison, if we turn it in a clockwise position and we come back over here to E-gap, so we'll get back on our E-gap, so now we're on E gap. We're going to come in here. We're going to loosen this guy. We're going to turn this to get our points to just start opening about right there. And now I'm going to go to the high side of the lobe. And now what you can see is you should be able to see that gap. It's huge. It, it's, it's bigger than our 10,000. So this is a 10,000. And you'll notice that it, it's a lot bigger than the 10,000. So it's gotten too big. So setting the opening point at our E-gap is, is the one step that you're going to do to get the points to open. But then you have to rotate this back plate to get our gap that we're looking for at the highest position. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rotate this thing about midway. We're going to go back in here and set this again. So we're going to loosen this guy. We're going to get back on our E gap. So we're at E gap. We're going to turn this guy until we get the points just there. And so now we're going to go a little bit past E gap and you'll notice the points are opening just right at the E gap. They're, they're opening right there at E gap. And to show you, if I were to just watch these points, they're closed right now. And right there is where they're opening. So if I put the ruler back up here, we should be within 132nd of our marks. And we are. So right now we have the points opening at EGET, which means they're going to fire at the exact moment that they're supposed to fire. But we need to go back over here to our high side and make sure that we have our 10,000s and we do now. So the back plate is only used to get our high, our, our, our tolerance at the highest point to make sure that it matches. We're going to be using the, the screw to set our beginning opening point. But we, in addition to that, we need to make sure that we open up to 10, 8 to 10 thousandths for everything to work properly back here. Now, once we've done that, we're just going to turn around and tighten all of our screws back up, lock our back plate. Then we're going to tighten up our, our point over here. And then we're going to check it one more time just to make sure that everything is, is looking correct. And if it is, we're done with the internal timing on the mag. We've essentially have, have a mag that when it gets to the number one cylinder, it's going to fire at E gap. At that point, the points open at E gap. And then if I move on over to, to line up our maximum open position, we have our eight to 10 thousandths tolerance. At that point, there is nothing to do inside of the mag. So if you open this up on the engine, you forget the engine for a minute. You use the propeller to turn yourself to E gap. You check to make sure that your mags are opening at E gap and you have your eight to 10 thousand tolerance. There is nothing inside of here that you want to touch. So at this point, and I'm going to, I'm going to go through this, but I'm going to show it in the next video. But if we turn this guy around here, you'll notice that it has a gear. This is what I've been turning to make that thing move. There is a, what we call a, a little rubber donut that goes on here that has teeth that match this. It has different teeth that match the engine. 
So the engine's sitting here, a rubber donut thing goes in here. And each rotation, if I pull that rubber donut and move it one tooth and put it back in, I'm essentially changing the mag by one degree. Now, if I turn it counterclockwise versus clockwise, then I'm changing either advancing or uh, retarding the, the timing. So I need to make sure that I'm turning it the right direction based on whether I'm firing before or after. But that's how you set the timing to the engine. So the first step is making sure that the mag is timed correctly and is firing at EGAP. The second part is to make sure the mag is set to the engine to make sure that it times and fires at the correct place. Now the engine, if you think about it, the engine, the propeller turns up to top dead center, but we don't want it to fire at top dead center. We want it to fire about 25 degrees before top dead center. And so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the engine back to 25 degrees before top dead center. And then we're going to keep rotating that donut until the E gap lines up with that 25 degrees so that at the point that the E gap meets the points open and we're sitting at 25 degrees top dead center. And so that's all there is to getting the, the mag set. Now I don't want to mention one more thing before we move to the engine, but on the bottom of the mag, there's four bolt holes here. The reason is that there's actually the, the same mag on, on the Pratt and Whitney. It'll actually work on both sides. And, but there's only three bolts that actually hold it on there. The, the top inside bolt, um, you can't actually get to because of the blower housing. So you're, you're only using three of these bolts to, to mount the thing. So to get this, to change the rubber donut, you're going to take all three of these bolts out, but there is a pinhole here that actually holds the mag on the engine. So to get the mag off the engine, you actually have to push it up to get that pin out and then pull it to, to you or away from the engine so that you can rotate the donut. Um, and you do want to make sure that you mark that donut before you do any of this so that you know where you started. So you're going to map your gear or mark your gear, mark the engine and mark the, the donut to make sure that you're putting this thing only one tooth each time that you're moving it to make sure that you get the proper adjustment.